Um, well, when Adele asked me to do this, she, I thought about the, something, a decision I made when I turned 40 and I felt the gaping hole in my soul as, you know, I had two kids, I had a boy and a girl, and they were about, uh, I guess Jimmy was seven and Ruby was four. They were like, we want to have a, we want to have a baby brother or a baby sister. And I was like, I am 40, I'm not going to do this, no way. And they were like, no, we really feel like we need to have a, a baby brother or a baby sister. And I was like, let me just think about it. And I sort of got on the internet and I was looking around and I'm like, you know, it's a world of weird in the adoption world, you know, I was like, because I knew I didn't want to give birth again and do the baby and the diapers and the thing. I thought maybe I could, maybe I could help a kid. Maybe, you know, because I'm a better parent when they start talking, you know, I, that's sort of, I, I get my sea legs a little bit, but the baby thing was not my gift, I'll tell you that. So, uh, so I decided, uh, I started writing something, and this woman just wrote me back with, in the, you know, because otherwise they just sent you adoption papers, you know, like, I'm like, whoa, I'm not, you know, I just want to sniff around a little bit, and I, so I started asking her questions, and I said, I'm gonna ask you some ugly questions and see what kind of answers you're gonna give me, but the truth is, I don't know if I could raise a disabled child or something, you know, I, I don't, how do you know, you know, that you're not taking another woman's baby, you know, that like, a, like if they're stealing babies, or you know, like you just, it's just a world of darkness out there, it can be. So she kept answering me, this woman in Waltham, Massachusetts, and she said, well, then maybe you need to um, think about get it, adopting an older child. And I was like, okay, my little girl. And then she was like, I guess she was like, Ruby was like six, maybe. And I thought, okay, an older kid. Um, she said, you need to adopt in birth or order, so it should be somebody younger than six. And I, and I wrote to her, and I was like, I'm not great with babies, so maybe if there's a kid, Whatever, anyway, we just went back and forth and how do I know if they, uh, I, I, I just asked hideous and, and logical questions anyway. At some point, she just kept answering me these questions that seemed okay and I'd run it by my fella and, I'd, and, and, uh, and then at, after a while, we ran out of questions to ask. I, I just couldn't think of any more and she said, it sounds to me like you're ready to make a decision. Uh, let me know. So I went out into the living room and to Ruby and Jimmy and, and Dave, and I was like, she, she, she said that if anybody wants to change their mind about this and is not 100% in, then uh, it's over. We're not going to adopt a kid. Everybody's got to be 100% on board. And then I remember I, I said, I think we could do this. I think we could, we could have this kid. And so I put my hand down and then, Dave put his down, and then Jimmy put his down, and then Ruby put his down, her hand on our top. So we did that whole sort of thing. And I thought, okay. So I wrote the woman back. I said, we're in. She sends me the papers. And I just sort of noodled around. I was worried about my thumbprint because I had a DUI in the 80s because I, you know, whatever. I did my thing in the 80s. <laughs> and, and I thought maybe I'd get nailed. And, uh, and I just kept getting the, like the universe was like, go do this, you can do this. So this was in January. I finished my dossier in like April, and by August, they sent a picture in, the, in my computer of a little dude, two years old, from Ethiopia's kid, Adunya. And I looked at it, and I had that feeling that you have when you first see your, your sonogram, you know, I had that same feeling of like this like pull, a maternal thing. And, uh, and then on, by November, we were all on a plane going to Ethiopia and, uh, and my life's changed. You know, you think you're zigging and then suddenly you got a complete zag and Dunya's been in our, my life for 12 years and um, he is my greatest teacher, I'll tell you that because uh, uh, it opened up a whole world that, frankly, I didn't know existed. You don't know about white privilege till you're the parent of, of a black child. It's, a, it's stark. 
And my black friends would say, of course, you know, what did you think? And, you know, they're like, are you stupid, you know? But I have experienced things like my son getting, uh, he was playing basketball and they benched him for a week. Now my white son would play basketball and he would take, steal the ball, which is how you play the game of basketball, and they'd tell him to walk it off. I've experienced these kinds of things in, in parenting my son that have been so um, alarming and illuminating. Anyway, my kid now is 14 years old and he is a big light in my life. I wouldn't change anything and it's been quite a journey. And I, I wrote this song for him and I hope you enjoy it. I'm playing the rattle because I cut my finger. <laughs> and so I'm going to play the rattle. <laughs> you look, look down on me.
Yeah.